Thing's got a fast shutter. Roll the intro. All right, what is up everybody and welcome back. First thing I wanna address real quick, um, a couple things if they're bothering you, because they're bothering me. One would be the shadow on my face. Um, I'm still trying to figure out my whole recording setup and the mic just happens to be right in the way where I have my light, but pretty much like the only place I can have my light. So it creates this sh shadow right here. <sighs> anyway, two is you might notice the recording quality is a little bit lower than my usual videos. I usually shoot in 4K or at least 1080. Um, so if you're noticing that's a little bit worse, it's not your computer. Wow, I don't know why I said it like that. It's not your computer. It's my camera. I'm actually shooting on the Sony A5000, which I don't even know if they make it anymore. But I'm shooting on it because I want to have this camera in hand just to show you guys everything that I'm going to be talking about in this tutorial today. Just because it's a little bit bigger so you can see it. And it's already got the strap on it. And I didn't want to take the strap off and put it on this one because I'm that lazy. Anyway, let me just tell you guys what we're talking about today. Today, I figured I'd take the time and tell you a little bit about some stabilization techniques that you can use for your camera. So we're not talking about anything of editing for iMovie or Premiere or anything like that, just in-camera stuff that you can do to make your the overall quality of your videos a little bit better. They're, all you need to do these techniques is your hands, a camera, obviously, and your camera strap. And then after that, I will point out some cost-effective ways that you can do this that I've used throughout the whole time I've been filming. But to start with, let's just cover the methods that are free and that you can do without having to buy anything all right so just get into it make sure you guys have the camera strap on your camera so you can follow along if you want or if not you can put it on later but the first step i'm going to show you guys is pretty simple this one is just you just put the camera strap over your neck like you normally would and you can adjust the size depending on how much distance you want between your neck and your camera depending on how much movement you're going to do but all you're going to do for this is just hold the camera out straight like this putting as much pressure on it as you can with your two hands and this is just going to create tension on the strap to help keep the camera a lot more stable it's going to be a lot less micro shake and stuff like that that you normally get from holding it handheld now the other tip you're going to do is i'll have to sit up a little bit so you guys can see especially do this if you're going to be walking while you're doing these shots is tuck in your elbows to your sides so that way you kind of have three points of contact your neck your hands and your elbows touching your body just like a stabilizer would have like a three axis gimbal would have those three points of contact to turn it's going to be your body is going to be your elbows your neck and your hands on the camera so you're going to have a nice stable movement so you're going to have all that support so it doesn't come in like this moving because you have your elbows on your arms you have the tension right here and you have your hands guiding it left and right it's going to come in handy big time especially when you're doing moving shots and a key thing to remember when you're doing these kind of shots and if you're going to be moving is to take soft smooth steps so kind of bend your knees a lot and go from your heel to your toe just like i'm showing in this video right now it's going to make it a lot easier your steps are going to be a lot smoother instead of getting that up and down bump so your camera's not going to go like this all the time and the other key to this is to turn your body as much as you can don't take this and use your your arms like this and just you know move your arms with the tension it's a lot easier like i said keep your elbows in and turn your whole body that way it's just kind of like one unit moving instead of the camera moving wherever it wants to this is going to help you get noticeably more stable shots just from using the strap on your camera and it's definitely going to step up your game other people have done techniques like this where they you know depending on the shot they can wrap it around their arm or something and make the same tension here and just go one-handed i've never done this and i never really have had a problem with it usually if i do need to use two hands i have enough room because this camera is mirrorless and it's so small that i can just hold the camera like this and use my elbow and hold it one hand while i hold something else in this hand and it does the job for me that's i think one of the perks of having this small camera now another key factor that i will point out that is super important to this because this trick is so simple is frame rates typically for me if i'm shooting cinematic stuff i want to do slow motion and slow motion is going to help you out so much whether you can do 60 or 120 frames is preferred either way it's going to help you out a little bit because the more frames you have is going to create less jitter in your camera when you play it back than if you were recording at 24 frames and then if you try to slow it down then it's already it's going to look awful but you're going to see so much shake so if you're in a situation where you're going handheld and there's kind of a lot of movement try doing this trick but try also filming at 120 frames per second it's going to max Maximize the amount of stabilization you have between your body and your camera, especially if your camera has in-camera stabilization systems. It's going to get you some really nice smooth shots. But 
you know, obviously you can't do this all the time, especially if you're in a low light situation, you're gonna have to come down to 60 or something like that. Just make sure that if you're going to a lower frame rate, like 60, that you're just really focusing on this technique right here, holding it with your two hands, using your elbows in and creating that nice tension right here. Or you can do any other method of creating tension with your strap and your camera. This just happens to be my favorite because it's easiest. And when you're done, you just let go. You don't have to deal with taking it off your arm and all that nonsense. So those two tips are super, super important. Now, the reason why I would even recommend going handheld and using these stabilization tips, even if you have something like a gimbal or a stabilizer like that, for travel videography at least, is you're on the you're on the go a lot. You're going from different locations, you're always moving, and you always gotta you know be able to pull out your camera, change the settings as you need it, and then get the shot because it goes by so fast. If you're using something like a Ronin or a stabilizer, you don't always have the time to wait for it to turn on or to stabilize it, make sure it's all adjusted and get your settings together or even if you got to pack it up go to another location and bring it out you don't always have time to set it up and do it with you and it can be a pain to just carry that thing all set up with you wherever you go so it's a lot easier to just take out your camera that already has a strap on it and just use this technique other reasons why handheld stabilization is good is because you can you can switch it up um, say for example if you were shooting a music video oftentimes in music videos you don't want to shoot like as stable as possible because you want to kind of get the feel of the music video. Um, I'll show you this clip for a music video I did. Um, I shot this completely handheld because I wanted the people watching it to kind of have that motion to go with the, the performer and with the music. So I didn't want to just have it on a stabilizer moving back and forth because it would be too boring. Now, but if I wanted to do some B-roll shots, I could easily just do these techniques with the camera tension, the neck strap, the arms in and everything, and the slow motion and combine those. And then on top of that, if it really wasn't enough for me, I could go into After Effects or Premiere Pro and add in a warp stabilizer effect over that. Or even if you're in iMovie, using that um, shaky footage stabilizer that I taught you guys about in another tutorial will help you out so much with this. It'll make your footage just as smooth as you can get it for handheld. And that's really all you need. Now, um, some other options that you do have are some low budget stabilizers or like gimbals, not even electronic ones. I'll show you this one real quick that I have right here. This is the um, Suta Photo. Um, I, I don't know what it's, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'll try to focus it here. All right, whatever, it's not worth it. This thing is like a little gimbal, cost me like 30 bucks, and it takes, uh, it does the job, you know, it has the, the things down here so you can weight it properly. You can take the weights off and add on more weights if you have them. I just have the least amount of weights on right now. And then it has these quick release plates up top, which you can move around to adjust the camera's level and stuff like that. And it has levels right here they're vertical levels or something like that so they don't really do a good job you'd have to hold your camera like this to adjust it and just doesn't make sense so these are actually useless but there's plenty of tutorials on how to adjust your glide cam so it's weighted so you can watch those i'm just letting you know that there is a cheap option for one of these like 30 bucks so if you guys are interested in something like this i will leave the link down below for the product to like amazon or something so you guys can check these out for yourself okay so that is it I actually, I, I kind of hyped it up like way too much at the beginning, like, oh, I have all these stabilization tips for you guys. It's really just like one tip. I've been filming full time like this stuff for a year and I haven't even bothered to buy, like besides that cheap little $30 glide camera or whatever, I haven't bought any other stabilizers for my camera. Maybe I will down the line, maybe it calls for it, but at the moment it hasn't come up really. So as it goes on and you use this tip, you will find out little cool ways to do this. You know, Peter McKinnon has a tutorial on this where he's like, he does the same thing and then he just falls forward so like up until the point where you know you stop yourself from falling you get a nice like rolling shot and that's pretty creative i'll leave the link in the description to his video as well for that if you want some other creative tips but that's all i got for this it's pretty simple and i think you guys will find that it helps you out a lot in getting your stabilized shots so that's going to be it for me today guys if you like this video please make sure to like it subscribe to this channel for more videos in the future and comment down below if you think this is a good method to stabilize your camera or if you have any other methods to stabilize your camera handheld without like a fancy gimbal or something like that and until next time guys i'll see you then